Welcome to Tig's Bits. We're visiting with our very talented pitmaster friend, Mr. J.D. Marsh. J.D. competes in competitions, caters events, has created some amazing barbecue sauces and rubs. The man simply knows how to do Texas-style barbecue, and we're going to talk all about it. I hope you aren't hungry, because you will be by the end of this. JD, it is good to see you again, my friend. Thanks so much Absolutely, for coming guys. on. How are you, brother? I'm great, man. It's been too long. Been too long. It has yes, been it too has. long. Yes, it, it has been too long. And uh, for those of you who are tuning into this, JD has been a guest on our fun little show multiple times. So you can go back, go check it out on our uh, YouTube channel or you know anywhere on social media, Facebook, Instagram. TikTok, all of those places at Tig's Bits Podcast. Don't forget about X, Felicity. You can't forget oh, about X. Can't ever. Don't ever sleep on X. Don't sleep on yeah, X. Yeah, we kind of get a little feisty over on X. We're a little freer <laughs> with things. So if y'all are into that, come over to yeah, X. Check, check that I go out. Back, they don't censor you over there. <laughs> I go back old school before it was the whole crew and you were just by yourself. I know. That's right. Yes, you that's do. exactly right. Yeah, you you just, used to tease me with J.D. Marsh. And, you know, like that's when I came on. You were trying to get me to come back on and I was waiting and you were like, you were making me jealous. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I remember listening. I was like, man, that's like, that's a real deal. He's got going now. I got to oh, yeah. get back over here and hang out with this guy again. Tiggs and I got to, <laughs> we got to dance again. Hold on. There I want to get and involved. I, it's what I happened. Involved. That's exactly and, what happened. And I think J.D. was the first <laughs> guest when I became an official co-host of the show. I think J.D. was one of the first guests we had on when it was yeah, us I three all yeah you know, yep. it was pretty quick transition. yeah and so, i remember yeah. uh, i've had people since then mention to me about listening to that and talking about they thought it was cool that you broke down um the behind the curtain inside baseball of competition barbecue and travel oh, yeah. and that kind of stuff you know you see on the shows you see how they're doing the meat and their stuff they don't talk about the getting there and how many days you got to do it and yeah. how to prepare and how far the drive is and the flying and what kind of equipment so i i think that was really cool so anybody who hadn't um listened to that go back uh, that that's interesting uh point Very of view there so. that you normally don't get on much uh, on any other outlets but this is on uh the tv show now so uh everybody right. um knows it's here and knows that that that's available so go check it out yeah absolutely, absolutely man absolutely that's good go do that i want to start here jd like let's just start at the beginning you know yeah. i know that not everybody has heard that uh, these other shows that we have done so let's kind of bring everybody up to speed a little bit tell us a little bit about your journey in barbecue when you got started and what kind of ignited this passion that you have i know everybody i've worked with him helped him cooked with him he is passionate and he can do it as good as anybody has ever i've i've ever met and worked yeah with. i appreciate that yeah yeah, man, yeah we started it. uh man it's been maybe 15 years ago now and we actually started doing chili cook-offs and this is before me and one buddy before we had kids and had stuff to do on weekends you know and no responsibilities not much money, so uh, chili cook-offs were cheap. All you needed was a Coleman stove, a, a pot, mm -hmm. and a little pop-up tent, and that was it. So we'd go do these chili cook-offs everywhere every weekend, just go drink beer and do chili cook-offs. And um, we got to the point where a bunch of them had barbecue cook-offs, and we grew up barbecuing, but nothing serious, you know. So finally we said, hey, we, we want to start doing the barbecue part of it also. So we had a buddy build us a pit, and, uh, man, it just took off from there. So it's been probably – like 12, 12 plus years that we've been doing competition barbecue. And then along the way, people start asking us to do caterings and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And the caterings have really ramped up in the last couple years when we really started pushing that. But right. uh, I don't have a lot of time for competition barbecue anymore. Uh, still do some of it, but not as much as we used to do just because, you know, you got kids and you got other responsibilities and caterings <laughs> are mostly on weekends. So yep, it's hard right. to find a weekend to go do a cook off anymore. Right. Cause the yeah. cook offs are well, and we were talking season. about it. Like I mentioned the, the, on the podcast before when we talked about it, it is a lot more than, Hey, the day before the thing, we're going to show up and cook tomorrow. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, you know, and it's not in your, it's not in your, uh, usually in your hometown. I mean, they're all over the country and I mean, you got, it's just, there's a lot to it. So I definitely, I get that. Yeah. Most of the ones we do do now are, at least in Texas, we, we haven't traveled out of state and since we went to Kansas City, I guess, a year and a half ago, maybe. Um, but, yeah, we, we kind of try to stay in Texas at least, San Antonio, yeah. Houston, 
Uh, there's there's some small ones in some smaller towns around here that we try to go to. But even the small ones, I mean, you're looking at you start preparing and getting your stuff ready. It takes a week to get it all ready and right. get your pit cleaned up and purchase all your meat and get all your stuff together. Make sure you check your X's and O's and then you show up, you know, San Antonio, we show up Thursday, Houston, we show up on Wednesday. Um, the smaller ones we show up on Friday morning, but yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. 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 Especially but, with kids and other, and you know, yeah. and trying to run a small business <clears throat> with, the, with the rubs and the sauces and everything else. I mean, fulfilling or doing all that. Yeah. I can only imagine brother. Well, that's good that the catering's picked up, but that's kind of goes hand in hand. That's kind of the deal. You go, you go do the events enough for everybody to see what you got. And then the people that want to hire you for the private parties, hire you for the private party. That's exactly that's right. right. You don't, you don't make any money in barbecue cook-offs. You can make some money right. in catering. That, right, I say yeah, that right. I say that a lot about uh, about uh, guys and uh, people playing at bars, you know, <laughs> playing music. It's like it's not necessarily what you're going to get done that night, but if the right person's in the crowd, they want to pay you to come, you know, their private party and their friends do and this and that and get you, you know, that's our it a is better the club. exact same scenario. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lacey, what are you doing? Are you, tra- are you? Are you? Oh, I just. To be oh, sorry. Trophy? I, I, I didn't realize I had that. Yeah, that's my. Uh, that's my <laughs> second place. JD, this is my first ever competition in any type of cooking deal. I got in a while, like, what, two, two months ago, three months ago? It was a Super Bowl. Yeah. That yeah, was Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. That's right. And yeah. I came in second, which uh, I think I actually won, but I think he does. Uh, the other guy had, he had <laughs> more kids cooking. there voting. Yes. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, I finished second, my very first chili there you cook-off. Go. You talked about the chili. Yeah, I was, I was very proud of that. You know, it was fun. I was excited. I got into it. But then I got nervous when we got there a little bit, like, man, what if I don't place you know like ah, oh, this is kind of you know because you, you you put all that work into it you expect something and then i started setting yep. in i started tasting some chilies and i was like, yeah Man, so i mean i, mean, I didn't place here but i did i came in second so i'm very happy big big <laughs> question is over there in florida is there beans in the chili or no beans in the chili mm, good question so you know that's, that's a great question and i contemplated all the way up to the end do i add some beans or do not add beans and i'm like here's what i'm gonna do at the very end i added the smallest amount of beans so when a person came around i would ask that question as they were judging i'd say you're a bean person or not you know and like i'm because i'm serving it so i would find a couple of beans to throw into that little smaller serving to give to them so i'm not a big giant bean guy but i will add beans you know what i mean so i was trying to hit both sides i don't think i realized this blacy that could have been what knocked it to second place no, I only gave the beans to the people that asked for beans. I, Probably I, so because everybody line. knows they might have ate. Everybody knows beans don't chili. belong in chili. Right? They might have. They might have <laughs> said, "Oh yeah, Texas. <laughs> that's exactly they right." <laughs> they might have set you up like Big Brother night. They might have, uh, uh, or meet the brothers. They might have just told you, "Yeah, I do love beans. Put some beans on yeah. here, bean guy," and then to take a point or two off because you gave them beans. You like, would have had to hunt for I those beans. It. it was the smallest amount of beans in there. Like oh, I tell you, I think, I think I think Tig <laughs> sniffed that one out as soon as you said it. Oh yeah. Like, Wait a minute. You, you had, did. You uh, had conveniently not know. mentioned this for months. <laughs> uh, hey, there's Actually, one it, little it, detail that had been left out. <laughs> Oh, and then okay. chili cookoffs, right. chili cookoffs here in Texas. You're not allowed to put beans in your chili. Oh, I'm you not. Can't, really? <laughs> you can't have anything <laughs> big. No beans are allowed, and you can't have anything bigger than than the meat. So you can't have diced up onions and bell peppers and all that. Anything it's bigger visible. than the meat that's ground right. up. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. wow. Cook. Bring us up to speed. Like, give us your resume, uh, okay. if you will, of of seasonings. This guy's a seasoning man. Oh, man. Everybody. Some I mean, of my favorite seasonings They're i've good. ever had over all of my traditional favorites are the ones i've got from JD. absolutely I agree like that i'm not just yep, saying it because we because you come here. on the show absolutely my wife true. likes it it's one of the few we can both agree on it's like lowry's yep. and, and anything jd sends the brush yeah, dust, the jefe any of that i love yeah. it I'm, I'm super proud of everything we have out there um so you know doing competition barbecue all these years we start tinkering with seasonings and sauces and this and that and come up with our own recipes and stuff that we've used over time. And uh, I guess it's, I don't know, four years ago now, we decided to to take that to market and uh, have it professionally bottled. So we did that, started our own company that lasted year, year and a half maybe. And that's when we partnered up with Alex Bregman and uh, started the Breggy Bomb brand. Um, That's been going on for two and a half years now, and it's been good. Um, But interests have gone elsewhere so i think that's probably coming to a close you can still get it breggybomb.com you can get it at rouse's in louisiana you get it at heb um for right now but that's probably coming to an end later this year um so my goal is to take everything that we have created and put it under my own brand 
and relaunch it, um, plus a few extras. I think y'all have the crawfish seasoning that or the the boil that'll be some of it i think yeah. did i send y'all the creole seasoning the blackening seasoning so that black season on, on these pompano have been phenomenal i've done that yes yeah i put that's, some i put i put that on uh fish and some uh, yes yeah. it's money so yep. those that's, two that's the unmarked that was the unmarked yeah, bottles right? yeah it was yeah, unmarked yes. that's correct yeah. those, yes and that's another one that we never took to market it's available to some uh, restaurants use it but we never took that one to market and then we have a uh, a rib rub that is really really good a little sweet little heat on it and, so uh, good. So I'm ready to ready to roll on that too. I'm hoping by well, the end it, of the year to have all that stuff launched. It, it's really good that you're able to, you know, they, they these rubs and all of this, they were your babies to begin right. with. I know the barbecue sauce is as well. Uh, yeah. You know, I know that it's your wife Amber's recipe. Yeah, she, she's been uh, making so. <laughs> one of them for 15 plus years. Yeah, that's right. That's is right. That, so, is that the original one? That's the original. The original. Oh yeah, I used that yeah. on some ribs the other day. Yeah, I started yeah. off with. I started with the rub, did a little of the rub, and I finished it with that. I'm not going to lie to you. Those are some of the best ribs, like just from a – just like so good. I normally eat two or three right. ribs. I ended up just – I wore that whole rack of ribs out. <laughs> yeah, so the original – I got home, I was like, sorry, guys, I got some collards over here. So the original really sauce is a, is a vinegar-based vinegar, <laughs> vinegar based sauce, vinegar and tomato-based sauce, and it works really, really well on pork. Mm. I love it on pork. Yeah, so the good. Swamp, so the good. swamp sauce with smoked chicken off the Traeger with that swamp sauce. Uh, yep. I, I mean, it's it. just, it's the, I mean, it's so good, man. Yep. I, love the I like the original on pork, and I like I like the swamp sauce on beef and chicken. Yeah, there you go. swamp sauce and with you smoked can tell chicken this, on Traeger. Oh. That, oh, my gosh. That, brush, that brush dust. Brush right dust. Right is, there's no, ladies it's and gentlemen, out. watching and listening all out. over the world. That's a big Millions that are watching this live right now and to the millions that will listen to it in syndication. Let me tell you all, that brush dust is the best seasoning you will ever buy. So funny yeah, thing I'm about, about uh, funny thing about there with your, tr- talk, your talk traditional classic that. ones that have been on the shelves for thirty yeah. years. I'm telling you, this one needs its spot. It, it, it is brush dust is not like anything else on the market. It is very nope. unique. Um, it is on the shelves our worst seller. I think the yellow, which is turmeric, I think the yellow scares people away. But anytime we do anything where people are, we're able to give out samples, it's our number one seller every time. Yeah. Right? First yeah, bottle I mean, gone you, in my house. And I've it's so put it versatile, on fish, man. I put it on oh, chicken. Yeah. Everything. Uh, it's a I, new ingredient in my white sauce now. I added yeah. to my white sauce as a finishing, and it really takes that white sauce to another level, man. My oh, daughter puts your Alabama white, white, white sauce? Yes. You, oh, you're wow. putting uh, – okay. All right. My yeah. daughter puts I it on putting popcorn, it, putting ramen. It on, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ramen, just rice, anything yeah. like that. Man, yeah. it's it's just so – oh, it's perfect. Very versatile. flavor. Yeah. And very unique. It is and then, extremely uh, unique. unique. Yeah, yeah. I think the the newest one that we came out with that we took to market was the Brisky Business, our brisket rub. And right, I'm, right. I'm super proud of that one. It's a traditional Texas brisket rub, salt, pepper, garlic, but it's got a little bit of tamarindo uh, sugar in it. Got a little bit of parsley in it. Got a little little bit of this, a little bit of that, but mostly salt, pepper, garlic. So it's still very traditional Texas style barbecue. And that I think that stuff is phenomenal. There's a lot of competition teams using that stuff right now around here. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I never do brisket, but, man, I sure enjoy it when somebody else does one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no doubt. No yeah, doubt. That's way. interesting with a little sugar that a little sugar in there. What is it? It's just wow. a very just slight a, hint of it. Does yeah. that help to get that bark a little, it does. a little more bark on it? Okay. It does that's help cool. with the bark. And you can actually, if you taste it in your hand, you can pick up just a little, little hint of sweetness on it. Okay. Mm. I don't, hey, I I don't think that that could you can go wrong with that at all. No, no. I would, it's, I, you it's know, good. Like you I used said, to hear people saying to put a teaspoon of sugar in spaghetti sauce. You remember that was always a yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people I, do when, that. When I made my own, I would always put a teaspoon of honey. Hmm. You know. Oh yeah. There you go. Little, but it's just something to kind of balance. Just kind of balance it out. Yeah, you know? just yeah. It gave it just gave it just a hair of something. I don't know. It does. So they say something with the acidity as well, but um, you know. Um, right. Uh, something to balance the it know, hits all of your senses on your i guess your so, palate right. or something all and i always thought well that's why we do that and i thought well i like i really like the taste of just good honey better than i do just, just regular sugar. sugar yeah i get it so, like an agave or anything like that would be good yeah. that's why it's, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah for sure i've yeah, got a friend sense. that has uh estaboga bee company uh in estaboga alabama that's up north near talladega dear friend of mine mr justin hill he um 
he kind of like you he started he, he had a passion with the bees and he started a company now and they're i mean I, they were just on al.com earlier today i was reading a post they they did an interview on him and um he's selling it to uh, caterers and restaurants and things like that and you can order yeah. it online as well and uh um you know that stuff doing stuff by doing stuff by hand and having it done the right way and not you know where it came from and all those things that's what another reason i trust your stuff i know we know where it comes from you know we know what right. it's going to be when it gets there we know the people behind it is not a fly-by-night company that's not going to stand right. up for their product they know what the product is you know they have yep. skin in the something game something made in china yeah or something that <laughs> you know, or or, so, or something that someone had and now has gone through several different ownerships and now it may be the same th recipe it may not right. but the people who made it have nothing to do with that sauce or whatever it is anymore you bet you know? like i said I'm, I'm i am super proud of every product that we've put out there and the stuff that we have coming up i'm even more excited about because i think it's some of the best stuff that we've done yet oh yeah. I can't, and it kind of goes wait. to so the whole go local thing you know go local yeah. everybody <clears throat> national you know where can right. everybody keep up with you to to know whenever this new uh, rebranding if you will of of your spices and relaunch let's call it a relaunch yeah, where can everybody it is, it's a can stay up um, with you to 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 follow follow along instagram and facebook are both pantano barbecue uh that's that's the new brand pantano means marsh p-a-n-t-a-n-o that means okay. marsh in spanish for anybody that doesn't know okay oh. i saw that on your logo i see the yep hence uh, the logo with the cattails and stuff yeah, the cattails yeah, yeah. so, so we got the new name cool. already so it's pantano yeah, and Pantano. Oh, there we go. Got there we go. New catering company is launched Tick already. It's so exclusive. It's, it's we're running. Exclusive. We're wow. not, you know, I haven't even created labels or anything yet for the for the sauces and rubs. That's coming, like wow. I said, hopefully by the end of the year that'll all be done. But the new catering company is up and running, full steam. What, what I'm looking most forward to is what you're going to be re renaming these, all of these Yeah, that's things the tricky part. Number one, the first original names that he had <laughs> with all these spices were great were great. great and then days. and then rebranded with the breggy bomb yeah fantastic names with them as well just awesome names went along with a baseball theme a little bit you know and just i will cool names i will there. tell you that uh and Any you can hints? ask my, you can ask amber no no hints because i haven't figured it out yet but uh, <laughs> you can ask amber i told her the other night I, I i have a hard time sleeping just too much going on in my head and the other night she's yeah. like, well, what what are you thinking about and i said well currently i'm sitting here at three o'clock in the morning thinking up new names for the rubs and sauces so <laughs> i get it I, get uh, I got i got a few ideas but nothing that really jumps out at me yet so uh it's a process got, to figure that you out. got something you got w one of them you've got figured out i don't know which one it is but one of them you've got figured out i, I can look mm -hmm. in your eye tell i us. can tell you brisky business is going to stay brisky okay business. good right, there we go. there i we mean go. brisky bit there we go that has to stay there. that's the one name that i'm to. like you that name has to say it's that one's staying good. the same i'm leaning towards on the uh on the Creole blackening seasoning, I'm leaning call, towards calling that blackjack. Oh yeah, um, oh, I like that. that. Those are really yeah. the only two that I've I've come up with any. Okay, that's cool. Any good name on? So I like. We'll it. see you on others. Have, if y'all have any updated. ideas, feel free to let me know. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, we, and we shall do that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Don't think that Man, we like won't. Said, I, the, we the, won't, the, we won't the start names. thinking. <laughs> the names were great, but the sauce is the sauce is the is the proof though. That's the real deal. So yeah, it, I appreciate it'll that. It'll be there. Yeah, man. So yeah, you know the the, the relaunch and rebrand will be tough. It's starting over, but yeah, I've got a, enough of a following and know enough people that uh, I can get the word out there. And people on the competition trail around here all know me, and a lot of them use our products anyway. So I think uh, especially online sales will ramp up pretty quick. And then there's a lot of smaller mom and pop meat markets around here that we can go into um you know we won't be in the big box stores anymore let's talk about some of the catering events and events basically yeah. let's just talk about events that you do and that you have done and i know none bigger that you do every year and we've talked about this uh in the past is the houston rodeo and yep. tell tell everybody tell america about what goes on at the houston rodeo every year so the Houston Livestock Show and Barbecue World Championship Barbecue Cookoff is the weekend before the rodeo actually starts. Oh, okay, Those that don't okay. know, the rodeo in Houston lasts for twenty days, twenty days straight. <laughs> rodeos, concerts. It is a massive, massive wow. big deal. concerts too. A, a big concert every night. Straight. 
20 days, days and every night is an A-list big time headliner every That's night. Exactly big big headliner. opening acts. Three wow. other three other big acts playing in the parking lot yeah, for I different. I had no idea that was I, th- I thought it was like Sponsors. a week or like four or five, six days. No, 20 no. days. Those big ones, those wow. big ones out in Texas and and some in uh, a couple other states, they go for 2-3 weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So wow. 20 days, uh the barbecue cook-off is the weekend before and it is a massive massive production. There are somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 teams there. And it's not like any barbecue cook-off you have ever been to. Um, you know, most barbecue cook-offs you go to, guys have their trailer and a pop-up tent or something like that. Uh, you know, even some of the big, bigger ones. I've been to Kansas City. I've been to Memphis and May. And you see some bigger productions and bigger tents, but not like Houston. At Houston, every – not every, but 90% of the teams there have a big tent. Uh, we have four spots out there, so there's nobody with a bigger spot than us. There's some other people that have four spots, but no one bigger. Every night we feed about 1,000 to 1,200 people, Thursday, Friday, <laughs> Saturday, in our tent. We have live music. We have bands every single night, um, and most tents are like that. It is a massive mm-hmm. production. You know, I had uh, Heath Riles, who is a world-famous barbecue cook and wildly successful with his rubs and sauces. He's out of uh, – out of the Memphis area. He came and cooked with us at Houston this year. It was his first time to ever come to Houston. I was on his podcast oh, yeah. last year, and he had mentioned he, that Houston was the one he had never done that he always wanted to. So we got him to come do it with us, and he was like, man, I heard about this, but I had no idea it was <laughs> That dude's massive. huge, man. He's a, he has a massive following on he does. social media. He really good guy, too. Great videos. You, you guys, do you know who we're talking about? Heath Riles. Um, I do not. Nope. He just makes all kinds. Of, he makes rubs and stuff like that too, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah I mean, he's won Memphis and May a few times, and his rubs and sauces. I mean, he's in Academy and Walmart. Right, right, wow. right. He's all over the place. He's 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 got it going on. That's yeah. awesome. But, yeah, uh, he's good. He's good. yeah he's for him, for someone like that to come in, you know, who's been to every away. barbecue cook off in the world and be like, Jesus right. Christ, what is this? <laughs> but like you're <laughs> yeah. right. But, but like you're saying, though, it's like this not no rinky dink sum. Everybody's coming in with semis and big, ri- you know, yeah, and, yeah. and pull, so, pull man, behind campers. And just just yeah. my spot, <laughs> just my spot will spend about two hundred thousand dollars for the three days. What? Uh, Insane, oh dude. Wow. That's nuts. And that's um, there's 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 a few tents out there that are spending a million dollars in those three days. What? Wow. Holy oh yeah, I mean they're cows, they're bringing man. in. I'm trying to think. Wow. Of you know, but this is any, but this any, is where everybody comes to to show what they've got, and that's, that's the right. best of the best. Um, the show. Any any artist, any country artist you can think of, big. I'm talking big names that, like you said, Jr. That the A list people, they're playing out there at that cook off in somebody's oh, yeah. tent. In a oh, tent. they are paying, oh, yeah. and they are <laughs> paying big bucks to have them. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Name uh, name a few folks that y'all have had in this tent that have played in y'all's tent over the years. So we don't go crazy on our entertainment. Um, let me think. Probably the biggest guy we've ever had is Cody Canada. But other than that, cross Canadian ragweed legend, dirt right. road, le- oh, dirt road absolutely. legend, absolutely, yeah, that's, right. Legend. that's right. That's right. Uh, Thanks for the connection really, there. I forgot. You know, we found that after years of doing, it, we started trying to bring in some bigger name people. That most of the people they're in there for the free. You know, once they get into your tent, they got to pay to get in the grounds. Once they get in our tent, it's free booze and free free food all night. Oh shit! Yeah, yep. so most the better of the, people the, ba- don't, <laughs> the, most better of the people band, don't the more care. booze it's going to be gone. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the people don't care who's playing on stage as long as there's good music. They don't care who it is. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of scaled back, and we've got some guys. Again, we keep it in the family. It's people that we know, people that we're friends with right. that are professional musicians but they're Dude, not there's so many names. good musicians out there there's yeah. so many great musicians out there yes so you don't have to be the big thursday guy. and friday we have them come in um we have a guy named matt caldwell who's written a lot of songs in nashville uh he plays on thursday night every year him and sarah hobbs play for us on thursday night usually uh friday night's a guy named seth candon he opened for or played friday night super super talented guy nobody knows who he is he uh he has a real they job. Will, and he's a musician. I, I was with John Party playing one of those thirteen years ago, and yeah. everybody knows who he is now. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, the past two years on Saturday night, we brought in Dueling Piano Show on Saturday oh, night sweet. in our tent. Oh, that's oh, I'm sure everybody people, loves. People that. Like love I said, that. If everybody's yeah, everybody's free drinks, free that's food. Yeah. They're just yeah. You, you, ever, you ever been to a piano like, bar and not had a good time? Always, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, every single time. I've never had a bad time. 
ever. That's exactly There's never right. been a bad time at a piano bar. I can't think of a single time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so exactly. I, maybe not. Maybe not so much the next day. Right. But I've yep. never had a bad time at a piano bar. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> nope. So yeah, cook off. Cook off was successful for us this year. It always is. You know, uh, we didn't do as well placing as we'd like to. Uh, I don't know why this year we feel like we turned in the absolute best product we've ever turned in out there, and we just just wasn't our day. Of all the cookoffs we do, I feel like Houston is the biggest crapshoot. Uh, judging wise, it's not sanctioned like most of them are. It's kind of a free for all. Joe Blow off the street could be judging your brisket that has no idea anything about how many, brisket. How uh, many judges yeah. go into something like that? Like, how many people get an actual vote on that, do you think? Yeah. Man, they split you into tables, um, six or 10 people on a table. And I don't know how many judges there are, hundreds, hundreds of judges. Hundreds so, of judges. A lot of it depends on what table you land on first. That's what I was going to say. So it's kind of just a crap shoot to begin with. It's not like there's percent. there's not ten judges and they judge right. everything. Because a sanctioned hell. one would yeah. be more like that, right? There would be a panel of judges. A sanctioned one, they like San Antonio is sanctioned and it very well run, and it's actually numbers wise bigger than Houston. It's not as big of a party, but numbers wise, as far as cook teams, it's bigger than Houston. But it is sanctioned, and so those folks they have their criteria that you know even if the judges are not professional barbecue judges. They have a criteria that they tell them, hey, this is what we're looking for. So right. I feel like in that environment, it's much more of an even playing field. You kind of know what the folks in those sanctioning bodies are looking for. Yeah. Uh, kind of know what direction to go. Whereas at Houston, it's just a total free for all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It yeah, makes I it tough. Have, now you've done well in San Antonio too over the years. Yeah, yeah, over the years we yeah we've done well at San Antonio. You know we've been top ten in several things. We've won first place in uh, dessert there one year. Um, yeah, we've won. We got a lot of a lot of banners from San Antonio over the years. There's always that one guy in Houston that likes beans in his chili. <laughs> <laughs> Share a memorable moment. JD, something that you could think of from one of these barbecue barbecue competitions that you've been on, or one of these events, just something kind of some kind of a crazy story, something that just comes to mind. What's something that just pops in your head? This is probably ten years ago. We had uh, we cooked a bunch of steaks on Thursday night for Houston Cook Off, and we cooked them on our pit, and there's you know a ton of grease down the bottom of the pit. We didn't we've done that a hundred times and didn't think much of it. And when we went to cook our competition, we had all of our competition meat on the pit Saturday morning, cooking our competition meat, and that whole thing just caught on fire. I mean, there was oh, flames Lord. shooting out the windows of the pit. Oh my and, God! Uh, wow. I mean, we're talking pulling out fire hydrant or uh, fire extinguishers and hosing it's stuff down. We're I'm we're trying to Lord. grab stuff off of the pit and just throw it to the side to save it. And uh, wow. that was probably the wildest, oh wildest God. one ever. And luckily, were you able we, to salvage that? Uh, we were able to salvage it. We didn't win anything. Um, yeah. But luckily. But you made you know, a turn in. Yeah, that's, we made a turn that's, in. That's good. We've got great just, friends. You should have just got, dusted it. You should have just yeah. dusted it at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Freak a little, little. Hell yeah. It takes us everything. According the barbecue to some. world is the barbecue world is really a, a bunch of friendly folks. And we've got a lot of friends that we cook with on a regular basis, you know, we're competing yeah. against them, but we're all rooting for each other. We're all friends. So when that happened, the guy next to us who we've known for years, cooked with him a hundred times, he actually let us take all our meat and put it on his pit. He had room on his pit to let us finish it off on his pit. Oh, okay. uh, that oh, was man, cool. that's nice. Yeah. yeah. That was super cool. So uh, that was probably as far as competition wise, the, the wildest one. Now I've had a few mishaps on caterings and stuff like that, where, uh, you know, I'm cooking meat overnight and I set my alarm for 4 a.m. and, or four o'clock and realize, wake up at six or seven o'clock and say, what the hell happened? Look at my phone. I said it for 4 p.m. instead of 4 a.m. And uh, yeah, that's yeah. happened a couple of times, you know, uh, but you make it work. You make it work. Yeah. Yeah. You Put you in a to. panic for sure, though. Oh, I oh. bet. I bet. Just That's what I was going to say. When you when something like that happens, your heart your, your, your oh just drops. And you're, it's horrible. And for a second, you don't know what to do. And then you start to start – then your wheels start going again. Okay, now what do we do? Now what do we do? Now what do we do? Yeah, so, so I, I was doing a um, – they call it uh, Barbecue U. is a big deal they do at Texas A&M every year. Um, the meat science department does it, and they put on a barbecue class bringing a lot of the best pit masters from around Texas – there's a affiliation with the Houston Rodeo that they do once a year, do a, a small version of that. 
and they bring in uh, Dr. Davey Griffin, who's the head guy at Barbecue U at a and They bring him in, and they always have a, a panel of two or three pit masters, and I've done it the past three years. Oh, and cool. this year, I, I was doing my brisket, and that, that happened to me. I woke up two hours late because I set my alarm for the wrong time. And like, oh, oh, my God. You know, i got to oh, teach this class and be on a panel talking to these people and feed everybody lunch. <laughs> and it was definitely not the best brisket I've ever put out. Not the worst I've ever cooked, but definitely not the best. But Did you have I, to I took that, rush it a little bit? Yeah, I had to rush it a lot. <laughs> it didn't have, <laughs> didn't have any time to rest. Hot and fast, nothing. baby, not low and slow and today. I, I've got no problem with hot and fast, but that was, right. you know, when I planned for it. And I wasn't planned for it that day. <laughs> right. And I like, fast I like, and Furious. Fast and Furious is right. And yeah. uh, But, you know, being on a panel and kind of teaching – uh, in that environment, I use that as a learning experience and express it to everybody. You know, I said, look, right. Even people that do this every single week, we do it all the time. You're still going to make mistakes. You're going to make a mistake and it can it, be a simple thing. You're going to miss. Right. There's 15, 20 steps, probably more on a list of things that you've got to do. That's right. You're probably going to, if you miss one or two of those that are very important, it could screw the whole damn thing. And it's up, just like anything know? else, even the best in the world, if they tell you they never screw up whatever their profession yeah, they're, is, they're, yeah. they're full of it. Oh, oh yeah, they so they're them. totally full of it. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They For have sure. other problems. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, what you mentioned something about brisket there that you are not afraid to go hot and fast. Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm familiar with, with this, but for those that are, aren't you know typically you low and slow 250 225 low and slow smoke 12 14 hours whatever till you temp probe it and all that stuff or wrap it and do all that stuff that whatever folks do yeah so you i think we do talk it, no you don't, I don't do it totally that way so so Not tell everybody kind of how you do it so i think we've talked about this you know maybe in the very first podcast we ever did but i think we um did. For years, we did that 225 and staying up all night at cook-offs, and, uh, you know, cooking for 14, 16 hours. And over, the, over time, we saw these guys that are not even starting until 5 o'clock in the morning. They're getting sleep all night, and they're beating us in the competition. So we said, well, mm. screw this. If they can do it, we can do it. Yeah, if so you we can't started, beat them, join them. <laughs> yeah, so That's I'm, right. <laughs> I haven't cooked a brisket for at 225 in 10-plus years. Uh, wow. I cook... I cook everything I cook is at least 275, whether it's ribs, chicken. Chicken, we, we cook super hot. We'll cook that at 350, 400 degrees. Yeah. Um, but ribs, pork butts, briskets, I'm anywhere from 275 on the minimum to 325 on the high side. Okay. And, uh, you know, a smaller brisket, I think last week for a catering, I did some brisket uh, two weeks ago. Um, actually, that was, we were at Turtle Box doing the event there. I cooked them in like six hours. Oh, and wow. They were some of the best brisket I've ever cooked. Um, Unbelievable. Wow. I, I mean, that's something that you just wouldn't think, but I've, I mean, I've had JD's brisket. It's phenomenal. It's You'd be hard phenomenal. pressed to find a, um, a successful competition barbecue cook these days that is cooking low and slow. Yeah. Okay. I and think a lot of them are cooking on those drums. A, a lot of them are cooking on those drums instead of offsets these days and cooking pretty damn hot the, the stack drums yeah yeah the, yeah, yeah. Okay. the 55 yeah gallon that's drums. interesting mm -hmm. yeah that's interesting but you know as as things evolve and there are new methods and new styles and new flavors and new techniques and then also new taste uh, taste buds and new people you know people well, like, like I said, different if, things if you can turn out product that's just as good and you're getting to sleep at night hey that's a win jd i don't think last time that you were here we did this we not do a little piece called little bits of controversy on here so we've already hit on some of those you know crawfish yep. dust or no dust you wear me out over adding those beans in my second place <laughs> finish in the uh, chili cook off here. So we'll kind of keep on that line in the you spirit bet. of that. So liquid smoke, does it belong in anything anywhere ever? Not barbecue, but it belongs in some, <laughs> I'll tell you what it belongs in. And Please tell we me. use it. We use it in our swamp sauce, barbecue sauce. There is liquid smoke in that to get that little bit of smoky flavor. 
Uh, okay, so okay. so you're okay with just that, just as a little. It does not like belong that. on barbecue. I don't want you to put liquid smoke on a rack of ribs and put it in your oven. That should not happen. <laughs> okay, dude, you're burping, you're burping liquid smoke flavor <laughs> for like two days. It's crazy. But a little touch of it and some sauce is a good thing. Yeah, just a okay. little dab, and yeah, that's right. <laughs> Dilute it a little bit. Oh not a marinade. God. Not a marinade. No, 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 no. no, no. All right. So this is, I think, um, kind of goes without saying. I think that so grass fed or grain fed on your beef. Grain fed that's... all day long. All day long. Is, is that all day long? Is that because of like the marbling and what you're getting there? Like what's one hundred percent? And I, I, the flavor is just so much better on the grain fed beef, in my opinion. I'm not a fan of the grass fed at all. Um, I know it's a you know trendy trend these days yeah. but yeah the flavor the flavor is just not there compared to the compared to the grain fed i agree a hundred percent with you yeah yep. i do too uh in the spirit of chickens how about this so how many chickens do you think it would take to take down an elephant <laughs> <laughs> man it, it'd have to be like a half a million or something it would have to be a yes. lot it'd be it'd a batch be a wouldn't lot. it It'd I'm trying to, to think how he would even get to him. I, he could, yeah. I, mean, I feel like he could just stomp forever. You know what I mean? I mean that's, like, get off me. Get off me. That's a lot of pecking got to, got to go on. <laughs> Eyeball. Yeah, that'd be tough. That'd be tough. Oh, my God. Is there an official gonna, answer? I mean, <laughs> yeah, what is the answer? I have yeah, no it's, idea. That's just, I think oh, it's just a thought. It's just a thought provoking thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start know? using that. There's a couple of those, those kind of things that me and my buddies go back and forth about all the time when we're at these cook offs and get to drinking. Like, what, what is there more of in the world, doors or wheels? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, man. We've and discussed see, that for hours. I'm probably going to wake up in the middle of the My house has night now. only three doors in it. Like, no, no, no. My house has more doors. You're talking about interior doors, too, right? Yeah. Cabinet, Any kind of door. It doors, can be a car door, cab- cabinet door. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm, I'm, I'm going with doors then. Like, but think about on your cabinets, every drawer on the cabinet, one door, it's there got wheels. two wheels. In oh, the, those wheels slides, too. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there's wheels like and everything. Wheels inside the. We need to get Hal Laird slides. on here since he's a windows and doors guy. <laughs> yeah, and there's Maybe no one like better that. than Hal. Can and tell then, us it, five then it all goes back to what do you fashion door? What do you define as a wheel? Like is a um, is it like a sprocket a wheel? I mean, clocks have wheels inside them that make them work and gears and stuff. I mean, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, you can well, argue that one for days. Electric, that's that's yeah, every electric is, motor is a, a wheel. Hole. So every fan right. you have, every we have you argued have. that many, many, many nights at barbecue cook offs. <laughs> hey, Blasey, I've got a. I don't mean to steer you off, but I've got a question uh, yeah. in that same vein for you and and for everyone because this is one we use down here, and I'll use it for where you live, Fort Walton, uh, Freeport area. How many? vacation rental homes do you think are in just your area because we we say down here how many condos do you think there are in orange beach and gulch how many individual units do you th- could you guesstimate there are so how many Dude, would you think would be in like destin say destin how many condo units do you think there are in destin florida just in destin florida alone uh, yeah. dude, I, oh my god how would you uh, uh, 21,000 i mean like there's a bunch you know what I mean? That's what, that's what we're saying about Orange Beach and Gulf Shores. We're like, I don't know, 15,000? I mean, that seems low, but I mean, I, it could be. That's a lot of doors. 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 A lot of doors. A lot of doors. Oh, my God. That's so good. Yeah. Hey, but every, and, but everybody who came had to ride in a vehicle with four wheels on it at least or more. Yeah, that's, that's true. very true. Yeah, that's very true. true. And, and they got car doors and it's a trunk of door, kind of a door. There's a bunch of wheels inside of an engine. If we're going to start to call you got, the you elevator, you got any more glossy? You got any yeah, more? I got, yeah, I, yeah. I got yeah we're going to just go down this of. rabbit hole for an hour. No, I got one oh. more thing that I was thinking of, but go ahead. Oh, go for it. On, yeah. No, 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 you go on, first. No, on 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 this topic. Go ahead, because oh. I I got I got something great to close out. No, it's no, kind of off topic. This is just one there of those go. things I was laying in bed thinking about, and in the middle of the night, like two nights ago, for summer, like three o'clock in the morning, can't sleep and. Talk Amber asked us. me the next morning, hey, why can't you sleep? I said, and I asked her, I said, what do you think the best fast food meal is? <laughs> I laid in wow. bed and thought about this for like three hours the other night. <laughs> I, like really broke it down. Yeah, I mean, I can't yeah. give you an answer right off the top of my head. My son could. He would tell you right now it's Cane's. Like, Cane's it, was it, it wouldn't say, even probably take him a second. To depends on who it. you That's are. That's not but- me. Uh, it depends on the mood. It depends yeah, on the I was mood. Say, first thought is Chick Fil A, pound for pound. Everybody oh, likes no, a Chick Fil A, no, no. but then, but then I go with like just probably if I had to pick like Popeyes, probably just a bo- good old box from Popeyes. I told <laughs> so, y'all I don't love chicken, 
And I don't eat it very often, but Popeye's is the one I came up with. <laughs> <laughs> What's not the That's crazy. There you go. Now, you're talking about an anti-chicken guy and still puts Popeye's at the top still of the list. Still puts it up at the top. You go get spicy it? chicken from Popeye's with that uh, mashed potatoes and gravy and the biscuit? Come on. I don't think it gets any better than that in fast food. Well, so Man, I'm glad to know you will eat chicken. Does. That's comforting. Yeah. Fry, <laughs> if it's fried. Be, if it's it fried. just has to be done yeah. right. It's it just be has fried. to be done right. <laughs> so for me, and I, have to, I can only get it in two places now on earth, it's an Op Alabama and an Evergreen Alabama. And that is the churches there because there's no other churches carry this. And it's the COB. That chicken o' breast sandwich, and they do this spicy jalapeno mustard sauce on it, and it's like a French bread roll, but it's a super soft bread, oh. and they wrap it like in tin foil. I mean, it just comes out hanging out in its own little goodness. Wow! You know what I mean? It's this breast, uh, you know, bread. You don't see Church's chicken much anymore. Either. Yeah, no, you don't. I haven't and eaten you, a Church's chicken in years. And they you can only get it at those two. I'm good sorry. The you can get it Andalusia too. Andalusia, Evergreen, and Op. The only three churches huh. on earth that still carry the cob. Because they used wow. to be part of the original crispy chick back in the day before they got consumed by churches. Uh, there to me, that's the best chicken sandwich on earth. Go there and get that and order a fried okra. Mm-hmm. It's special. Yeah, oh, my fried gosh. Okra. I love fried okra. All right. If I'm anybody watching this show is not starving after we <laughs> conclude right. the we show. Said, we warned, look, we warned you at the beginning. We warned you at the top of this. You've get stuck ready with to get us. Hungry. If you're not hungry right now, if you're not going to turn this TV off when we're done and go eat, then something's wrong with you. <laughs> Last question yeah. for yeah. you. All right. So, in the shock jock world, I know you're big into that. So, like between Mike Calta, between Mike Calta, and Bubba the Love Sponge. I mean, who's your guy there? I mean, I don't know who Mike Calter is, so I got to go with Bubba. I, at least <laughs> I know who that is. Absolutely. There you, you go. Here we go. So, so you do yes. know who Bubba the Love Sponge is? 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. First Perfect. guest we've ever had that knew yes. who Bubba was. Seriously? There you go, awesome. Bubba. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've known who, I've known who he is for 10, 15 years. Yep. Wow, He's for awesome. sure. So you must be a stern guy back in the day. Back in the day, I was. Not so much these days, but yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I think so. I think Bubba's about the same and. Other, other things have changed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no when, when, no when you were talking earlier, it made me think of our, our dear friend, uh, Bubba the Love Sponge, when um, you mentioned rebuilding an empire. You know, that's what Bubba's yeah. doing right oh, now sure. as well. You know, yeah. he got he got all his socials and everything kind of swiped from what I yeah. heard Blasey say. So, uh, build, yeah. rebuilding the brand, you know. And um, I think, it, like we were saying earlier, and that goes back to that, J.D., everything's a lot closer than you think between yeah. what you're yep. doing, what we're doing, what he's doing, what Turtle Box is doing, what all these other sponsors and, and different people we commingle with and friends and, and – and you know, two set two degrees of separation. Sure, um, I think everybody's on the rise. It's, it's so, very interesting. Here's how I feel about my my situation specifically. Is it going to suck to start completely over? Yeah, it's going to suck a little bit. But it's just me, all by myself. Nobody else has any input. I do it how I want, and yep. I answer only to myself. And I think in the in the long run, it'll definitely be better for me. Temporary pain for long term gain, baby. One hundred percent. 